know it has been months since you were able to go out from your homes and travel. So, I have decided to take you on a virtual tour with me for today's class. I know everyone already knows how to read and interpret letters and words. But how about images? This is the subject of our lesson today. You will learn how to interpret the meaning suggested in visual media through a focus on visual elements. It's time for a learning adventure! Let's go! Before I forget, let us first define what visual media and visual elements are. Visual media are sources of data or information. They can be in the form of visual representations such as pictures or photos, graphic organizers, abstractions, illustrations, and more. Visual elements are the building blocks of composition in arts. The most common visual elements are line, space, symbol, color, gaze, framing, and aesthetic distance. Let's look at some of the artworks here in this gallery. Now, these paintings may have different messages and interpretations depending on how we perceive them. Let's look at this painting. The title of this painting is Young Girl in Pursuit. What do you think is the meaning of this artwork? How does this make you feel? Why do you think there's a woman in her hair? The answers to all these questions can vary from one person to another. A lot of people interpret it this way. The young girl may represent today's youth with all their dreams and aspirations, but the society, represented by the woman in her hair, sometimes stopped or hindered them from pursuing their goals. These are the most common visual elements. Let's start with the first one. Line. A line is a set of points extending in both directions. It is used to create shapes, forms, and textures. They can be vertical, horizontal, diagonal, zigzag, or curved. They may also vary in length, width, weight, texture, and style. Here is a digital artwork composed of various lines used together to create a representation of an animal, specifically a wolf. Notice the different styles and width used to form the features and depth. Isn't that amazing? Another element is space. A line divides a space. This space is the area covered by the entire artwork. Look at the repetitive subject used in this art. What do you see? We have what we call positive space which is the area of interest or the subject of the artwork. If you look at all the black portions, then the positive space or subject are the birds. If you look at the white portions, then the positive space or subject becomes the fishes. Cool, right? Let's move on to another one. It is the symbol. A symbol instantly makes people think of traits or message that they want to associate with a company, group, product, or service. The symbol represents the picture which can be remembered and identified with greater ease than a thousand words describing a company. 
This modern art shows what our life has become. Can you guess what message the artist is trying to convey here? All the logos or symbols you see in this illustration have something to do with the internet and how we have become so dependent on it. In fact, we seem to need social media as a common medication for us to live in this day and age. Without it, we cannot survive. Such a simple artwork, but it reveals a message about our reality. Let's move on to another one, which is color. Color can be very powerful. They can create varied emotions. For example, red could represent passion and love. This is why you see it used in romantic images such as hearts and kisses. Green is the color of nature and is often used to represent growth or freshness. Take a look at this painting. How does it make you feel? It is made up mostly of the colors blue and a bit of yellow. Blue is a color that makes you feel calm and relaxed. That is why going to the beach can sometimes give us a feeling of peacefulness. Yellow, on the other hand, is a common color that represents happiness. The scene in this painting shows exactly that. There is happiness waiting over the horizon. Doesn't that just give you positive vibes? Another element is gaze. A gaze is a steady, intent look. Right, like that. <laughs> when you stare and look at something as if you are curious, your eyes widen as if you are wondering. It can also express surprise, alarmed, or even stupidity. Here is a painting of a young boy's gaze. What do you think he is looking at? Perhaps he is wondering who is looking at him. This is a very common gaze among children as it shows how innocent and curious they are. The gaze of subjects in artworks can show emotions and who or what they are directed to. Another one is what we call framing. Framing is the proper placement of the subject together with other images. This is a feature of visual elements to highlight the subject inside a particular frame. Here is a great example. The artist for this painting creatively used the pupil of an eye as a frame for the clear blue sky, therefore highlighting it as a subject. Instead of focusing on the eye, your attention is directed to the reflected image, the sky. Just wonderful! Lastly is the aesthetic distance. This is the distance between the realities in a work of art. It does not only refer to literal pictures, but it can be identified in other visual media and even in literary works where distance is visualized in the form of text. I like how the artist used trees to show distance in this painting. The rows of trees in the foreground have wider spaces between them and start getting smaller as they appear to go farther. It's as if a forest awaits beyond the perfectly lined up trees, making a flat canvas appear to have depth. Magnificent, isn't it? There's our halftime reminder. Time to check what you have learned. Let's review. Identify which visual element is being referred to in the following questions. Question number one. 
It is the presentation of visual elements in an image, especially the placement of the subject in relation to other objects. It can make an image more aesthetically pleasing and keep the viewer's focus on the object or objects. A line, B space, C framing, D distance. The correct answer is C framing. Question number two. It refers to the gap between a viewer's conscious reality and the fictional reality presented in a work of art. A. Distance B. Line C. Framing or D. Space The correct answer is A. Distance Question number three. It is a set of points extending in both directions. It is used to create shapes, forms, and textures. It can vary in direction, length, and width. It may be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, straight, or curved. It can also be thick or thin. A space, B distance, C color, or D line. The correct answer is D, line. Question number four. It means to stare, suggests looking fixedly at something, to look steadily and intently at something, especially at that which excites admiration, curiosity, or interest. To stare with eyes wide open, as from surprise, wonder, alarm, stupidity, or impertinence. A. Distance, B. Gaze, C. Color, or D. Line. The correct answer is B. Gaze. Question number five. It instantly makes people think of traits or a message that they want associated with company, group product, or service. Through them, people find it easier to recognize, identify, or recall images than texts. It can be remembered and identified with greater ease than a thousand words describing a company. A space, B color, C symbol, or D line. The correct answer is C, symbol. And now, let's try interpreting visual media. Answer the questions about the visual media and show them to your parents or teachers. Are you ready? Let's look at image number one. What colors are used in the artwork? What do the images symbolize? Was framing used here? If so, what are the subjects? What values do you think are suggested by this artwork? You may now answer. Here are some possible answers. Number one, 
The colors used were mostly black and yellow. Number two, it symbolizes nature because animals were used. Number three, yes, the sun framed the creatures and the plants. And four, through the use of the different elements, we can say that the image wants us to give importance to nature, including plants and animals. Image 2. Number 1. How were the lines used in the artwork? Number 2. What does the image symbolize? 3. Was framing used here? If so, what subject is emphasized? Number 4. What can you say about the subject's gaze? And 5. What values do you think are suggested by this artwork? You may now answer. Here are the possible answers for image 2. Number 1. Diagonal, curved, and zigzag lines were used as if to show a fence. Number 2. The image could symbolize being trapped or locked in or locked out. Number 3. The fence is used as a frame. The artist does this well by capturing the woman as the subject of this artwork. Number four, the subject's gaze is fixed onto whatever is beyond the fence. She probably longs to be on the other side. And five, this shows the value of longing for something as if one is trapped. It shows a feeling of misery and loneliness. Good work, everyone! Now, it's time to summarize what we have learned in our adventure today. First, we learned the difference between visual media and visual element. Second one, images can be perceived and interpreted in different ways. Third, the most common visual elements are line, space, symbol, color, gaze, framing, and static distance. And lastly, we learned how to interpret images or visual media using visual elements. That's all the time we have for today's learning adventure. See you on our next learning adventure with me, Teacher Serena. Bye!